Hey everyone, welcome back to another beginner JavaScript practice video. If you're not already familiar with this series, basically I find a beginner level problem that we tried to implement together and I will step through that code using the VS Code debugger. So I think this is really good if you're just starting off because these are the small building blocks you need to understand as you further progress in your development endeavors. So the problem we're trying to solve here is basically we want to loop over a string so let's say we have a string called the dog jumped over the lazy moon or whatever that, you know, <laughs> repetitive string that everyone uses is. Let's say you wanted to count the number of T's that occur, the H's that occur, the E's that occur. And over the entire string, you'll have a, a map. So like, for example, let's say we wanted to say all the T's in this is equal to one. And then we have one here, so two total. All the H's are one, looks like there's two here. All the E's, looks like there's one, two, three, four, four. So basically that's kind of what we wanna do. We wanna count up all the characters and then finally print them out so that we can use that knowledge for something larger, for some larger application or whatever. So hopefully you have a good understanding of what we're trying to solve. Um, again, if you were to kind of do that on paper, basically you would just look at every character and then every time you find a character, you would initialize a new place on your page to keep track of that count, kind of like we just did in text. So I listed out the steps here so we can kind of follow along. Um, first thing we want to do is we declare a string to run the count logic over. Right? We just had that string, so let's just go ahead and grab that back here. So I'm going to make a constant variable called the string, and I'm going to set it equal to the dog jumped over the lazy moon. Awesome, so one step down, four to go. Step two is we wanna create some form of data structure that we can keep track of these characters, right? And it turns out a JavaScript object is a great uh, data structure to use to keep track of these. It's basically a map, right? A map is a good data structure to solve this problem. So let's just create a new constant variable called character counts and set that equal to an empty object and we will slowly put new keys and properties inside this object to keep track of the character counts. Step three, if you're familiar with looping and iteration, you can do a while loop, a for loop, a do while loop, or whatever your favorite iteration um, approach is. In this case, what we can do, or what I would like to do, is I'm just to do a for loop, and I'm going to loop over every character of that string. So this is one approach that you can do in JavaScript. You can say const name a variable, keyword of, and then the string that you're trying to loop over. So every iteration of this loop, I will get every character. So the first one I'll get T, and then I'll get H, and then I'll get E, and then a space, etc. Okay, so now that we're at step four, what we want to do is check if the object we have up here, if we haven't already seen the character, then we need to initialize it to be the value of one. So one way we can do that is say if the character counts of character is equal to undefined, then we need to set it equal to one. In fact, I could actually just set it equal to zero down here um, because step five or the step, um, this, this step, the increment step, we need to do after this if, if statement, and we can say basically just increment that by one. So if you know what plus plus is, it basically it takes a variable, it adds one to it, and it restores it back where it was located. So that is basically how you do that logic. Again, I will go over this with the debugger. It'll make more sense if you are lost. And then finally, we could just print out that character counts. So I think that is all we need to do to solve this problem. Let's go ahead and put a break point here. And if you're not already familiar with what a breakpoint is, basically I can use a debugger to step through the code line by line and then inspect what these variables are at each step of the pro uh, process. So in VS Code, if you have VS Code running, there is a little bug icon here. You can click it, and that is for loading the debugger. And then you can click Debug with Node.js, and that is going to run your script inside the debugger. Now something useful is this little watch panel here where you can watch your different variables and you can see how they change 
over time. So the ones that do change, let's just go ahead and put a watch on. So if you double click on your character, sorry, if you double click on your variable, you can say debug add to watch, third from the bottom. And that will put that variable over here. We can keep track of it as we kind of iterate over the string. So let's just go ahead and step over. If you're not familiar, these are a couple of actions you can take in the debugger. The one we're curious about is the step over, which will go line by line. But you could just click play and that will go through the, the entire script or you can stop it if you're done. So let's just step over, step over again. You'll notice that character counts is an empty object here. Step over again, and we are inside the loop now with character set to T. And we are looking at line 10. So if character counts of T is equal to undefined, which it is because we haven't seen any characters yet, we're going to go into that if statement and we're going to initialize character counts of T to equal zero. So that should hopefully make sense. And notice that when I clicked step, we see that character counts now has a T character in its map with the value of zero. And then we move on to step 13, where we just increment that character count we just found by one. So click it and notice that the T became one. And I'm not going to do all of these because at this point it should kind of make sense. We just keep checking. Have we seen H before? No. Set equal to zero. Okay increment it by one. Have we seen E before? No. Set it equal to zero. Increment by one. And then we keep doing that. And I'll just go ahead and keep going until we find one that we've, let's see, where are we at? O. We haven't seen O before. G, J, U, M, P. Should be at E again. <clears throat> okay, E's next. Okay, so we're at E now. We are at or sorry, so character counts of E should not be defined. I mean, it should already be defined because if you see over here, we have E. So if I click step, notice that the if statement will not be taken and will increment character counts from one to two, right? So now we have two spaces, we have two E's, and we have one of all the other characters. So I'm just going to go ahead and click the play button here. Um, I'll put a breakpoint here so it doesn't clear out this uh, watch panel. So if I click play, that'll run through all of my characters. And then finally, I have a final tally of all the different characters that were in this string. Awesome. So hopefully that walkthrough made sense. Again, I hope you tried to solve this problem on your own before you watched me solve it for you. And also, if you want this code, feel free to go to my Git repo. I have that code located at Cody Seibert slash YouTube um slash beginner javascript practice and you'll see that file here after this video has been uploaded so if you like this video be sure to subscribe and like and be sure to leave comments below and i can uh, get back to you if you have any questions all right thank you so much for watching